Hi everybody and welcome to another PAP Problems video. My name is Helena and I'm the Access and Outreach Manager for the Department of Materials at the University of Oxford and today we're going to be taking a look at question number 17 from the 2014 PAP paper. So let's have a look at this question. So this is another physics question and we're looking at charged particles. Okay, so in this question we're told that we can assume that the electrostatic potential energy of two positively charged particles with charges plus q1 and plus q2 separated by a distance x is given by this equation here where k is a constant that we don't really need to worry about. Okay, so they've nicely given us an equation there. Now let's have a look at the scenario that we're presented with. <clears throat> so here we have two charged particles placed a distance d apart from each other. So let's start drawing this as a little diagram as we go. So we've got two charged particles, a distance d apart. One has charge plus q and a mass m, and the second has a charge plus 2q and a mass 2m. Charges are initially held stationary, so our initial speeds are zero for both, but then they are released. And we're being asked to find an expression for the maximum speed of the particle with mass 2m. Okay, so on this diagram I'm going to label this one as particle number one and this one as particle number two. So what's actually going to happen as we release these two particles? So they're both positively charged, they're like charges, so they're going to repel each other. So as we release them from rest, this one is going to move this way and this one is going to move this way. And at the point where we have the maximum speed of these particles, that's the point at which all of the initial electrostatic potential energy of these particles is converted into kinetic energy. We can also think of that as the distance between them has gone to infinity. So they're at the maximum distance apart. All of that initial energy has been converted to kinetic energy, so we have the maximum speeds of the particles. I'm also going to label what I'm going to call these speeds as V1 and V2. Okay, so now we have our diagram. Let's start to think about this question. And it's looking a little bit like a collision question, but just going in the opposite directions. Okay. So, what do we have initially? So we can think in terms of energy and we can think in terms of momentum. So if we think about the initial energies, we have an initial kinetic energy of zero because both particles are stationary. We have an initial electrostatic potential energy, which I'm going to call V, which was given by that equation at the top. So in this case, we have something that looks like K times Q times 2q divided by d, which gives us something that looks like 2kq squared over d here. Okay, And we can also think of momentum, so I'm going to call that p, and our momentum at the start is zero. Again, no velocities, everything's at rest. So what happens after we release the particles? So after, we have a kinetic energy which is non-zero, which looks a little bit like a half times m v1 squared plus a half times 2m times v2 squared, which if we want to factorise some things out into brackets, we can take a half m out of the bracket and we have a v1 squared plus 2 v2 squared. We now have zero electrostatic potential energy. So that distance has gone to infinity. All of that initial electrostatic potential energy has been converted to kinetic energy. And we also now have a non-zero momentum. Okay, so I'm going to look back at our diagram and I'm going to say that particle one is going to move off in a positive direction. Now they're opposite directions. So that gives us a momentum of mv1 minus 2mv2. Okay, so now we can think about conservation of energy and conservation of momentum. So let's look at the energy first. So conservation of energy will give us that initial electrostatic potential energy, which is 2kq squared over d, being equal to the final kinetic energy, which is that half m v1 
v1 squared plus 2v2 squared. We can also think of conservation of momentum. So we had zero initially, and that is equal to the final momentum above here of mv1 minus 2mv2. So now we essentially have two simultaneous equations. We're being asked to find the maximum speed of particle 2, which is v2. So we can rearrange equation 2 here to make v1 the subject, and then we can eliminate v1 from this first equation here in order to solve it for v2. So if we do that, well, we can divide by m here, and we find that v1 is equal to 2v2. That's a nice little equation. So if we substitute that back into equation 1, we have 2kq squared over d is equal to a half m. So we're substituting this in for v1 squared. So if we square that, it will give us 4v2 squared plus 2v2 squared, which gives us 6v2 squared. And then we can just rearrange this to solve for v2. So let's do that in a couple of steps to make sure we don't make any mistakes. So we have 2kq squared over d is equal to, well, half into 6 gives us 3mv2 squared. Divide 3 by 3m, we have 2kq squared over d, uh, over 3dm is equal to v2 squared, which if we square root that gives us a value for v2 of the square root of 2kq squared over 3dm. And that is an expression for velocity that we were being asked to find. So that's one way we can go about solving this question. I hope that was useful and please do tune in next time for another Pat Problems video.